why do all the blue shells hit me in the ass? Cause I was in first, but now I'm in last. No other video game has brought me and my typically non-gamer girl sisters together as much as Mario Kart. Now just so we're on the same page, I have seven siblings and they can basically be broken down in, into a, into a com and comprehensive, uh, easy to see, competitive cool guy tier list. You got the number one A1 draft, the draft star picks at the top, uh, the middle sandwich boys, and us baby shits at the bottom. Typically us baby shits would just hang out by ourselves, um, usually accompanied by my baby shit cousins as well. The great thing about being a baby shit is that you get all the hand-me-down stuff. So when my brothers moved on to the N64, I got the Sega Genesis NES and Aladdin. Brothers grow tired of the N64 and move on to the PlayStation 2, baby shits get an all access unlimited backstage pass to the N64. And although me and my sisters would dabble in a variety of classics for the N64, including but not limited to Kirby and the Crystal Shards, the main attraction was easily Mario Kart 64. Here I go! The beauty of Mario Kart, not just 64, but any of them, is that it's like 60% skill, 40% pain, and 100% reason to remember the pain. There's a lot of pain, but the pain is a good thing. By adding a random element to the racing genre, Nintendo practically invented a new kart racing subgenre. It's a formula that means that a dumpy player could still have a good time, and a skilled player could drift around corners like their, their middle initials were D. It's a formula that also proved to be extremely successful across multiple generations. Shut up, because it found a way to appeal to everyone. Not just fat-headed baby boys, but the sisters of the fat-headed baby boy that never played video games and didn't realize that turning the controller didn't actually help you turn. Racing is a simple enough concept to understand. You know, my dad walks in the room, looks at the screen, sees a big-ass number on it, hears some vroom vroom car sounds, he's gonna be like, Jacob. <laughs> I thought I said no video games in my house. Then you just add some random item boxes into the mix, spice it up with some creative level design to keep things interesting, add in some recognizable faces, tie it all off with some memorable music, and you got just off a stew. Now there are a lot of Mario Kart games, and also a lot of Mario Kart clones that tried and sometimes succeeded in varying degrees of success to replicate Nintendo's formula for success. But my favorite kart racer of them all has got to be Double Dash for the key. Double Dash is my personal favorite Mario Kart for a variety of reasons. The levels, Baby Park. The roster, Baby Park. The music, Baby Park. But the game's greatest achievement was its ability to force all of us baby shits to bond and have fun with each other in a time where we were all super awkward teenagers that hated everything. Two people on a cart means I actually have to talk to my sister? Oh, I'd rather die! And that seems to be a common theme among the Mario Kart games bringing people together. One time in like eighth grade, I was on a school bus trip to a different state and I had just gotten my first very own Nintendo DS Lite entertainment system. I didn't have any games unless you count drawing penises on PictoChat a game, but lucky for me, Nintendo included a very cool feature called download play that meant that even though only one kid on the bus had Mario Kart, seven other people could play for free. And we did. It was all we did. It was amazing. It, it, I kissed a female girl that year, and Mario Kart on a bus was still the highlight of 2007. And none of this has really changed. This isn't another one of my videos where I lament the death of something. Mario Kart is still alive and well, and 8 is one of the very best ones. And it's kind of insane that a game series that began in 1992 is still finding ways to reinvent and improve on something that was already so good over 25 years later. We got customizable carts now. We on some 200cc F0 light speed shit. We got music that matches the pacing of the levels. And we got Pink Metal Peach for some reason. I don't, I'm, that's not a character I'm familiar with in, in the lore of Mario Kart. Oh, I'm sorry, did I, did I miss a fan novel about the, the legend of gold? Pink, pink, rose gold. Go to hell, Metal Peach. Plus it's on the Switch, so you can pop those Joy-Cons off and race whoever the hell you want at a second's notice, assuming your dad is cool with it. There is no other video game franchise that I can think of that has consistently brought so many different kinds of people so much joy for so many years. And with the recent announce of a new mobile game, I sincerely hope that Nintendo continues their winning streak with the series. Because whether you're playing with Tilt Controls or Super Nintendo Controller, Peach, or Weird Ass Metal Peach, 
you're probably having fun and you're probably also kind of pissed off because you just hit another banana for like the sixth time. My family plays Mario Kart, therefore, Mario Kart is my family. Good day. Ah. Ah. Da. Da. What the fuck? Da. Candlelit, charging, Randy, Lily, Penelope, and Castle. Glenn Dodds, Raymond, Katie Scafford, and Connor Presso, yeah. Big Daddy Groove, Boss, Rizzo, Sizzle, Van Liverman, and John Deffius, Eddie Six Kane, Michael Coons, and Walt Disney, Disney, Yoli Two, Four, Oreo, Steve ZB, Russian Money, Dan. And Addy Boy G, Clinton Peterson, aka TFH Darkzilla, Jacob Art, and that one got meta. We got Lord Commander Star, Lola Viviella Flame, Morgan Carlton, and Foggy Mountain. Hey Kendall, it's Ian, Dark Bless, Scott Sploky with us, and y'all know the rest. We got Brandon, Alexander Cohen, Mitchell Hoover, and Kangaroo Boy. Kangaroo boy, kangaroo boy, kangaroo boy. We got kangaroo boy, kangaroo boy. Thank you. That was kangaroo boy, written by myself, produced by John Cl Tom Clancy, John Clancy's brother. <laughs>